Good afternoon, I'm Machi Mikos and you're watching World Talks, where every word matters. Former Polish Deputy Minister of Justice Marcin Romanowski's future hangs in balance as the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe has just voted to lift his immunity. What consequences would it have for the politician? Well, to discuss uh, the issue, we're joined by Dr. Olgierd Annusevich, political scientist from the University of Warsaw, and Jakub Jaraczewski, research coordinator for Democracy Reporting International NGO and expert in rule of law. Good uh, afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good so, afternoon. To begin with, um, Dr. Annusevich, what is Marcin Romanowski mm, accused of? What is he indicted for? Uh, there are, of course, two aspects of the story. One is uh, strictly legal, and uh, since I'm not a lawyer, I will not uh, try even to repeat the, uh, the accusations that were written in the motions. But generally speaking, uh, the, the, the communication, the, the, the image uh, issue crisis that they face, they, I mean, all the right in Poland, is that... Uh, the Justice Fund that was uh, established to uh, spend money on programs uh, that should help victims of, uh, of crimes. Uh, actually, these money were uh, used not to help victims, uh, but to uh, spend on uh, some programs that were supported by Law and Justice or Solidarna Polska. Uh, mm, well, so, so we we can say that the main accusation the main tr problem is that the money were not used in in the in the purpose that way that that they were designed uh, that the fund was designed for and that uh, minister romanowski was uh, making his own personal decisions uh, sending the money uh, to the locations and programs that were helping him and his political allies, not, uh, not, not, uh, not the not victims of, of crimes in Poland. Right. So, Dr. Olga Radmusevich uh, calls it a um, an image, uh, a public image problem for um, uh, for the uh, broader right uh, on the Polish political uh, scene. However, we're talking about uh, serious accusations here, and I'm wondering how solid is the uh, the evidence um, against uh, Marcin Romanowski, and what was the scale of uh, mishandling the, uh, the, the the public um, uh, money? Jakub Jaraczewski, please. Thank you very much. Um, we, of course, don't know the exact content of the 11 charges that were raised against Mr. Uh, that had to be raised against Mr. Romanowski. However, we know a couple of facts about the Justice Fund. During the years 2019 to 2023, when Mr. Romanowski was the Deputy Minister of Justice in charge of the Justice uh, Fund, approximately 50 million euro of this fund have been uh, spent without open tenders and calls in kind of a freehand procedure which allowed the uh, officials in charge so mr romanowski and his team at the ministry of justice to distribute the money as they saw fit there are several issues with how this uh, played out uh, as mentioned earlier a significant amount of this money has been directed to areas in poland where uh, politicians of the Sovereign Poland Party, uh, the party of Mr. Romanowski, uh, former Minister of Justice Zbigniew Ziobro, and their allies, have been running for office, both the Polish Parliament, the European Parliament. Also, uh, reports from uh, media and civil society, and now also documents from uh, the new Ministry of Justice, reveal that a uh, significant amount of this money has been used not to help uh, victims of crime, but however, were directed to various uh, initiatives and uh, 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 actions that had very little to do with justice, such as, for example, supporting local fire guard or uh, uh, various civil society initiatives uh, 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 that were active in the area. However, the charges from what I am aware also include not only misappropriation of public funds, but also the crime of steering a criminal enterprise, an organized group. I believe that this speaks to 
the uh, unit at the Ministry of Justice which was in charge in distributing the funds. Um, recordings that were made by a, a official, former official at the Ministry of Justice, Mr. Mraz, who was part of this uh, team tasked with distributing money from uh, the Justice Fund indicate that there was significant element of political coordination and that indeed this money has been spent in a way that was primarily aimed at what I can only describe as being a political slush fund for the mm -hmm. sovereign Poland, a junior coalition partner of law and justice. So the case is sounds very very serious uh, indeed so now we come to the uh, to the main uh, point of our interview i would say now that he loses his um, I'm, I'm talking about Marcin Romanovsky now that he loses his uh, council of europe immunity what awaits him in poland uh, dr radnusevich please again uh, i'm not a lawyer so uh, please uh, excuse me from answering on, on the legal uh, path of this story. I am the political scientist who focuses in, he, in, I focus in my research on the issue of political communication and of course the consequences of political communication that will uh, have on the political scene and on uh, how people will react and they, how the political views will be uh, constructed. Uh, the main uh, the, the main framework for, for, for the theories in, in political uh, communication is that uh, you have voters who are decided or who, who will vote for the Polish right parties, whatever will happen, no, no matter what will happen. And of course, there are uh, those who will uh, who, who will not vote. Don't didn't minding don't minding the the, the situation. No no uh, that there is no possibility to to vote for him. But the the political uh, the, the politics is about getting the votes, the attracting the sympathy of the middle part of the electorate. And uh, so how how has the the whole case affected the ratings of law and justice? And uh, that, the uh... that's what that, that one, yeah. I, that's what I mm -hmm. what I would find. It will hit law and justice uh, uh, pools because it will allow governing uh, coalition to keep on the creeping crisis, the creeping communication. They will uh, it will be kind of a series of the episodes in which. Uh, the, the the ruling uh, the, the governing party will be uh, able to remind on a daily basis to the voters to the Polish citizens that roughly speaking they were stealing uh, Polish people uh, money of course as uh, as my colleague told us it has quite complicated legal side and of course there's 11 charges they they probably are too complicated for uh, um, every man to understand what's inside them. But uh, if we if we if a governing party will be able to uh, form it in a simple message, they were stealing people's money. They were spending people's money without procedures. They were spending people's money to their interest only, not to the interest of the people, not to the interest of the victims of crimes. Then it might be uh, it might be very damaging for the uh, for the pools, for the social support, for law and justice in general. Especially that we are now uh, we we now can hear that there is an idea to include uh, sovereign Poland into uh, law and justice, and of course, sovereign uh, law and justice will uh, also you know, take the bullet from the. Uh, from the sovereign uh, Poland uh, history and, and the charges that are uh, on uh, Minister Romanowski. Absolutely. So now, uh, mm, Jakub Jaraszewski, maybe you could answer the question, what awaits uh, Marcin Romanowski in Poland now that he, uh, that, now that he has lost um, his um, uh, Council of uh, Europe immunity? 
So, of course, uh, first of all, the Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe's decision must be uh, assigned by post and received by Polish prosecution officers. We're talking about a very formalized and paper-based procedure in Poland. Once that happened, however, the question of what next is actually very interesting. The Polish uh, Code of Criminal Procedure forbids apprehending the same suspect twice over a, uh, uh, the same uh, 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 charges. Uh, so, in principle, uh, he could not be apprehended again. However, there is exception if new circumstances of facts arise and were discovered since his previous uh, apprehension in July. Then perhaps now, the is, is, is this the case? Is there any new evidence? We don't know that. Uh, this is in the hands of the prosecutors and a court will then decide whether those new circumstances and uh, uh, situations have indeed arose and paved a way for subsequent second apprehension. The prosecution can, of course, now will be able to press charges and will be able to demand some sort of uh, measures to ensure that Mr. Romanowski does not uh, in any way tamper with the procedure or does not leave the country. There are several measures that could be used, the temporary detention being the more harsh ones. However, there are also others such as a ban on leaving the country or an obligation to report to a police station, which all could be employed. I, of course, expect that Mr. Romanowski will fight those measures in every way that would be possible for him, uh, claiming that uh, 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 he is still protected by the domestic uh, immunity in some way, or perhaps that the charges are politically motivated. So, in fact, this will all come down to courts in Poland, which will be examining whatever the prosecution will request, and, of course, will hear Romanowski's protests against this. And, unfortunately, of course, we run into the Polish rule of law crisis here, with uh, uh, Poland struggling with the issue of the so-called neo-judges, of whom some are politically motivated and loyal to the previous government. And in fact, whatever decision might happen, there will be uh, somebody who will claim that this court has not been objective. So this is unfortunately one another ripple effect of the rule of law black sliding that we've witnessed in the country over the previous years. Now, Dr. Anusevich, uh, lastly, you said that uh, it will probably um, hurt the, the public support of, uh, of law and justice in the long run. Now, I'd like to, to ask you for the counter-arguments of the uh, right side of the uh, Polish political stage. Uh, how will they present the whole case? Uh, this is interesting, but when you, uh, if we will recall the, the, the so far communication from, uh, from Polish right, they are uh, defending Minister Romanowski more on the procedural uh, failures of uh, of the so far prosecutions, but I haven't heard too much uh, praise that uh, his work was excellent, that the programs uh, founded by uh, Justice Fund were effective and uh, actually helped uh, help people. This is uh, also the case that the old politicians from law and justice, they not necessarily like these uh, young, uh, also very energetic, but in, in some way com competitive for uh, law and justice politicians from, uh, from sovereign Poland. So uh, it's kind of a... Um, uh, it's kind of, kind of a dissonance that uh, on on one hand they feel obliged to defend uh, Mr. Romanowski because he was the part of the law and justice government. On the other hand, uh, the, every bullet that uh, sovereign Poland will uh, will take during this uh, upcoming months or maybe years, it's a uh, it's a benefit for old law and justice politicians because it uh, in some way uh, decreases the the chances of the um, kind of internal competition between law and justice and, and sovereign poland these two parties they aren't uh, united yet uh, they are still in in a form of uh, coalition so so they 
compete about the same voter. Uh, so I wouldn't expect too much defense from law and justice. Uh, there will be probably some comments from the sovereign um, uh, Poland uh, uh, politicians, but uh, well, they have to come up with some uh, reasonable arguments showing that justice found was used in a proper way. Otherwise, uh, it will be a kind of you know slippery slope for them. Mm -hmm. So the next few weeks will uh, will tell us whether he'll be presented as a bad apple uh, or a political uh, martyr. Dr. Um, Olger Dadnusevich, a political scientist from the University of Warsaw and Jakub Jaraczewski, research coordinator for Democracy Reporting International, AGO, an expert in rule of law. We're our guests um, uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Thank you for watching. That is uh, all for now and stay with us for much more here on TVP World.